learn about your team today? Uh, that's a good question because I think it's more than one thing. I, I think the bottom line is uh, our infield's got potential to be pretty dang good defensively. Uh, there were a couple plays that they didn't even make, uh, but there was also uh, some average plays that were made well and then some above average plays that were made that were difference makers in the inning. Uh, but also there's some depth on the team too. There's some spots there that are up for grabs. And I know you guys have asked questions about, you know, who's going to do this or that. And um, sometimes it sounds like a coach's cliche answer that it's open competition and we don't know yet. But now there's proof of that uh, given today's game. Look at Billy. I was going to say, look at Billy Emick, one of those guys on the infield, had a big day today with the bat. How was he kind of incorporating into the team, into the clubhouse, and obviously in that lineup? Yeah, I think the two biggest things are defensively, he wants to be good, and he continues to improve every day, and he's got the ability uh, to be really good as is. And then the best part about him being, being in our locker room or being on our campus so far is how quickly he took to our team. I think a part of it is his willingness to do that, and then also I think – both us and Billy got kind of lucky. He just matches up really well with some of our older guys. Um, and so it kind of feels like he's been here all along. Alex Perry, another newcomer today. Yeah. It seems like he's really picked it up for the last week or so. Yeah, I mean, swinging wise, you can see it in BP and the cage and also in our inner squad scrimmages. He just looks more comfortable um, and is impressing and, and looks like himself at the plate. Um, Coach Elander spent a lot of time recruiting him, but we're also we follow the numbers and see stuff on video. And at first, some of these guys are just trying a little too hard when they first get on campus. Uh, but he looks like himself at the plate, and then he's one of the go one of those guys defensively. When he's fully hooked up and engaged, he's a really, really good defender. And uh, just because we called this a game, when at the end of the day it's still a fall scrimmage. He and some of those other guys activated their feet a little bit more and their mindset a little bit more, and it paid off. Dylan Drawling, uh, a big day with the bat. What have you liked from him this fall so far? I like that he's still healthy. I mean, he went full speed almost right into that uh, brick wall out there, which shows you, you know, he's not one of those guys that wears it on his sleeve as much as maybe Beck and Gilbert did, um, but he showed signs of swinging the bat as well as those two guys, and he's really worked hard at becoming a defender, and he almost took it to an extreme like I was uh, alluding to with that play where he dove head first towards a brick wall. Fortunately, with our stadium construction, we got uh, you know pads going up on those walls. But all in all, the kid is very gifted hitting-wise, and he's a great teammate uh, in, in the dugout. Yeah, first good. time tonight, some of those freshmen got to go against other colleges like Ariel and Tigo. What do you see from those guys at the plate tonight? Yeah, I mean, m more from my end, regardless of how each one of them did, is they get to get it out of the way. I mean, just get that first thing out of the way. You're not human being or you know you're not a natural person if you're not feeling a little bit anxious or a little nervous or more than anything just kind of inquisitive like what is this going to be like is it going to be different than high school and now we played in front of a big crowd in a great facility tusculum was awesome awesome to us how they cleared out their locker room and how much they did on the field for us um but it's just baseball you know it's probably a little heightened level of baseball but it's just baseball so that's the big thing to get behind us and then for the most part i didn't see anybody that looked you know like they were blown away at what was going on i know a couple of the freshmen didn't throw as many strikes as they normally do but you know probably just a little too hyped up hey coach, is there anything that you feel like you've learned about your club coming to this new environment and seeing some more power here yeah I, I think one thing that we learned um you, you know is kind of you got you got guys like redmond walsh who find a way to almost elevate their play a little bit and i don't know if it's that as much as when it's game day their heart rate, heart rate is right. They're under control. They have confidence in what they're doing. And uh, these inner squads we have, we're going to have another one on Tuesday. Y'all are welcome to come check out. Um, they aren't the same as a spring game. Being able to do this, it brings us a little closer to what a spring game environment is. And you kind of saw four or five of our guys that we'll talk about in a coach's meeting that this, this guy or that guy can probably play for us. What pitchers stood out to you? Schaefer. Schaefer. He had great presence. And, I mean, I, you know, some of those innings, three outs are quirky. I mean, so if you get three outs and no one scored, it can look like you really did a great job. But, you know, we're, we're not necessarily looking for the scoreboard this time of year. It's kind of more how a guy does something. So not only did he throw up a zero, but he did it against – their lineup was really good. I, I know we, we mixed lineups a little bit towards the end there uh, and also very aggressive. But also the game was tilting in their favor at that point. And he kind of came out and was a calming influence. Made a great PFP play, threw strikes, had great presence. 
And then, you know, anyone that recruited college baseball or scouted college baseball knows he's got good stuff. On the flip side, uh, probably not the best inning for, for Snead, who's looked good this fall. What went wrong for him in that inning award? You, you know, these guys are um, – Coach Chef runs – uh, a very detail oriented and organized program. You can see it, how stuff goes on in between innings before the game, uh, just how they've played since he's been there. So they know who he is, and they know he's got a good fastball. So, you know, they got after it a little bit. And, uh, you know, he gets behind a guy 2 0. That was probably a big difference, too. Very close pitches, but they're balls. And, and then, you know, their best hitter gets into one as well. So, um, you know, he threw strikes. The misses were pretty good. Um, probably just got sped up a little bit because to that point we were kind of holding the you know pretty good offense down a little bit at least on the scoreboard and now all of a sudden man what went wrong and I, I think probably got sped up a little bit after two really good aggressive hitters put good swings on fastballs but I don't think it was anything more than that he just needs to you know relax and again he's been in college baseball before this isn't anything unique do you have any update on Zane Denton's status? And then how have you seen Amick and Curley kind of step up, especially today at third base? Yeah, I mean, those two guys are plus defenders. And regardless of what Zane's role is, um, Dean was a high school shortstop and can really play short and is a plus first baseman. Billy played first at Clemson last year and has played a lot of second baseman, base for us. And then, you know, when we visited with Zane, too, when, you know, this summer we weren't – I don't think anyone quite has the 20 round draft figured out in free agency and they're subtracting minor league teams and maybe even some players here in the future. Uh, we talked about various positions. So um, when he's available, we'll figure out who belongs where. But I think the big positive is our left side of the infield uh, was really, really good today at both of those positions. And we used three different guys at shortstop and two different guys at third base. And the nice thing about each one of those guys I just mentioned is they can all swing the bat pretty well. So fortunate to have athletes that can kind of move around and play a bunch of different spots and also help you offensively. Big picture, what does it mean for your program to get put on an event like this and have the support you have? I mean, you can probably count on two hands a number of programs that can do something like this. Yeah, it's just fun. And I, I know Virginia Tech is close, so not too far of a trip for them. And they have a few people here. Uh, but the amount of people wearing orange and that are fired up to either meet our players or get an autograph, I think they had some orange hats they gave away. Uh, it's pretty special, and um, we won't do it, but it'd be fun to rank, you know, as the years go, we're about to go to Nashville for the first time. We've been trying to get over there forever. There's other parts of the state. It'd be fun to go see the fans, uh, and it'd be fun to rank them, you know, where our guys enjoy the most. But it's a little different flavor at each place we've gone to, but there's some really nice parks in the state of Tennessee um, and then Big Orange Country. They'll, they'll follow you around wherever you go as long as you don't play on football Saturday. <laughs> How much of a luxury is it to have a guy like Dalton Bargo, corner infield, corner outfield, catcher, good stick? I mean, how has he kind of helped your team the, the early going here? Yeah, I'm going to go selfish on you, and maybe I'm getting older, but kind of want to come to work fired up to, to be around your teammates. And that could be your coaching staff or your support staff, your managers or the players. And I just really like being around the guy because he's kind of a throwback. Um, he's not really worried about what you label him, what position. Uh, what his future is in pro ball, uh, what he's doing on that given day in the lineup. It's He wants to play, he likes to compete, and he wants to get better every day. He looks forward to being coached. He's not afraid to work. And uh, maybe it's because he's from the Midwest like I am. Uh, that's definitely a joke. Uh, <laughs> but he's, he's really a joy to be around. So he's valuable peace of mind wise, but also when you're, when you're kind of doing a lineup and messing with stuff, you can do a lot of different things with him. And the best part about it is we had no idea he was that good of a runner. He's a really good base runner, but he also runs very well. So he's, he's got a, a lot of different roles he can fill for us. Thanks, Tony. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Appreciate it.